You sent for me, Mr. Wayne? Yes. Have you seen this? Oh, yeah. Then the studio hasn't wasted much time. A quarter of a million dollars. A lot of insurance. Denver was a big name. This is an expensive movie. They started location shooting on the Riviera Coast two days ago, and then Denver goes off and gets himself killed. So the studio stands to lose a pile of dough. $10,000 a day while the crew and cast are standing idle. You want me to go to the south of France? Yep. Here are your airplane tickets. Mallory has already reserved a suite for you at the Hotel Memoir in Cannes. You've got exactly four hours to pack. Sorry to rush you like this, Jeff. Check up on how Denver got himself killed. If it was suicide or some irresponsible act, then the insurance is void. Otherwise, we have to pay out $250,000 to the Sinosphere Corporation. Okay. Bon voyage, Jeff. Thanks. A coyote from Europe. Brad Summers. Jeff Keenan, by all that's holy, I thought you were in New York. I uh, just arrived. Look, I have a reservation at the Hotel Memoir. Could you meet me in the American bar there in about an hour? Sure, sure. Uh, what are you doing over here? I'll tell you when I see you. Bye for now. So long. Well, she made a big hit with you, Brad. Jeff, you old son of a gun. It's good to see you. You too. What was that all about? I, uh... I just got a little too curious about her friendship with Clark Denver, recently deceased. And maybe she should have slapped me, too, because that's what I'm doing out here. Your studio made that claim on Denver, and my head office sent me out here to investigate. Well, then start investigating her. Verna Berto, Clark's girlfriend, some say, before he disappeared. Monsieur? What are you going to have, Jeff? Uh, straight whiskey, please. Double it. Missy! Well, imagine my embarrassment. A major publicity assignment, out of circulation for three whole months, I just get him fixed up with this picture, and he's got to get himself killed. Out of circulation? Where was he? Uh, don't ask me. Ask Verna. But as you can see, she doesn't take kindly to guys getting too, uh, too nosy. Maybe you used the wrong approach. <laughs> could be. Well, what's the pitch, Jeff? Well, I thought maybe you could give me some dope on Denver. Uh, got any ideas? Any place where I can start? Well, I've made a few inquiries on my own. You ever heard of a man called Strigoli, Jeff? The Italian industrialist? Dead, isn't he? Yep. So is Pettifer, the oil man. Natural causes, thrombosis, something like that. No autopsy in either case. Well, what's the connection? Well, figure it out for yourself. Strigoldi and Pettifer, both friends of Bernaberto. Both disappeared the same way as Clark Denver. And both died suddenly soon after they came back. Back from where? A psychiatric clinic near here. You see, two weeks ago, I heard that Denver was there. Well, the studio was getting a little impatient because the picture was about to start and... Well, I went out there. They wouldn't let me see him. Where is this clinic? Amerson. Amerson? That's where Denver had his accident. Now you're on the beam, brother. Monsieur? Thank you. Missy. What is it with this just Berto that sends all her boyfriends into a psychiatric clinic? Maybe I ought to go see her and find out. Her address is number two, Rue Michelin. But Jeff. Go careful, boy. Blood's a lot warmer than I imagined. 70 proof, Jeff. 70 proof. Sorry to intrude, Miss Berto. I'd like to talk to you for a minute, if I may. It depends what you want to talk about. A mutual friend, the late Clark Denver. Oh. Oh, then you had better come in, Mr. Keenan. 
Chuck Keenan. Hey, sit down. Thank you. You right? Oh, thank you. I saw you in the bar at the Hotel Memoir with Brad Summers, an old friend of mine. You can have him. He's been telling you things about me, hasn't he? Why should he? And about Clark Denver and others. Do you tell fortunes, too? Do you see anything there about a clinic, Miss Berto? Who are you, anyway? I'm an insurance investigator, and my assignment is to check on Clark Denver. Apparently, before his death, he decided to spend three months in a psychiatric clinic. Any idea why? Why ask me? Well, they told me you were very close friends. Clark was inclined to be, shall we say, a little neurotic. He was very interested in racing cars, and he used to drive too fast. And a few days ago, his wife had filed a petition for divorce, too. He was very upset about it. How about the Messrs. Strigoldi and Pettifer? What have they in common with Mr. Denver? Well, for one thing, they're all dead. <laughs> the great Mr. Summers knows all, hears all, and tells all. You don't like him, do you? Should I? An amorous alcoholic that spends all the time he can spare away from the bar, prying into other people's business. Well, Denver was his business. As publicity man for Sinosphere, it was his... Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Keenan. Please forgive me. But you see, poor Clark, well, he was rather a special friend of mine, and, and since he died, I've been very overwrought. So maybe you should apply for treatment at the Amazon Clinic yourself. Clark Danvers, what is there I can say? Monsieur Danvers died unhappily in an automobile accident. Well, I thought you could probably give me some added facts about his death. I took a look at that spot in the road where he crashed. It's straight and quiet. Yes, that is so. Very straight, little traffic. Then how come Denver crashed? He was an expert racing driver. Ah, that is, uh, how you say, enigma. The car. Run off the road and pity. A tragedy. Now, among the personal effects of Monsieur Darver, there is this, and this may well account for the accident. You might like to look at it, perhaps. You will see that Monsieur Darver was having treatment for, how you say, a malady of the brain. So, perhaps. This accident is not so very mysterious after all. But an autopsy should show exactly what was wrong. Not necessarily. Psychiatry is uh, an invisible science. There exists another possibility also. Such as? Suicide. Monsieur Lambert was not a happy man. We have been making inquiries. There was domestic trouble, a question of divorce, I believe, and a mental disease. People don't often commit suicide in a car. Now, I'm after facts, not theories. There is the undeniable fact of death. But perhaps you would prefer an opinion more expert. Follow me, please. Very little physical damage, Monsieur Kinen. A few minor lesions due to the broken windscreen. No bruising, no loss of blood. Does that add up to anything? We must wait for the autopsy. As an insurance investigator, Monsieur Kinen is very anxious to know the verdict. Suicide, accident, or foul play? <laughs> I'm afraid there is no possibility of suicide or foul play. You see, everything indicates that Monsieur Danvers died suddenly before the accident. In fact, it seems likely that his death was the cause of the accident. Yeah, but why? What killed him? The autopsy will show. Meanwhile, if I may guess, cerebral thrombosis. Well, I guess we just have to wait and see how good a guesser you are, eh, Doctor? How far is this Amerson Clinic? Uh, just about two kilometers on the road for Lorville. Oh, thank you.
doing here? Came to have my head examined for ever letting you out of my life. It's been a long time. Three years, Ruth. Downbeat Club, New York. And you have a marvelous memory, too. Some things in particular. Well, now, tell me, what's a glamorous movie star doing in a psychiatric clinic? Well, I don't do much starring nowadays. For lack of a story? Maybe you came to the right place. Oh, don't tell me you think there's a story here. Oh, fascinating, beautiful woman, three dead men, won an Oscar award winner, and now you. All the ingredients for a scenario. What's your tie-in, Ruth? Or you a patient here, too. <laughs> Why, do you think I need a psychiatrist? <laughs> well, I really better be going, Jeff. Not till you tell me where you're staying. 11 Bis Boulevard Saint-Saëns in Cannes. May I come and see you? Why not? Well, I'd really better be going. You speak English? Certainly, sir. I'd like to see whoever's in charge of the clinic, please. It's important. I'm afraid Dr. Maxwell is very busy at the moment, but I'll let him know you're here. Who shall I say? Jeff Keenan. I'm making an investigation for the Consolidated Insurance Corporation. Oh. Dr. Maxwell, a certain Monsieur Keenan, insurance investigator, would like to see you on important business. Oh. All right, I'll see him as soon as I can. Yes, I'll tell him. And by the way, we're ready with Signor Collini now. Très bien. I'll send Signor Collini down. Signor Collini, the doctor would attend. Merci. Mr. Keenan, Dr. Maxwell will see you in a few minutes. Would you care to take a seat? Thank you. Signor Collini. Uh, would you come with me, please? I see this is your first visit to the clinic, Signor Collini. Si, si. I hope you can help me, Dr. Maxwell. I think we can. Would you lie down there, please? Would you hold that, please? Yes. Your type of case responds very easily. When the treatment is over, there will be no trace of these fears that you've been having. I hope not, Doctor. There's nothing to worry about, Signor Collini. The essence of our psychotherapy treatment is deep relaxation. We simply take over the mind for a while and reshape it a little. We train it to accept new thoughts, emotions, new responses. But first, before we can deal with the mind, we have to make quite sure that the body is functioning normally. How long have you been an addict? Six months. It's been terrible, Doctor. What started it? I couldn't sleep. My nerves were gone. First my wife left me, and then let go. I gave her everything. We shall do our best to make you forget. We shall give you dreams, vivid, soothing dreams. Doctor, are you sure it's all right? There's nothing to worry about, I assure you, Signor Collini. We shall place a metal electrode around your head like this one. from which you will experience, through your brain, the emotions of the actors who will already have been recorded on a slow-playing magnetic tape. It'll be exactly like listening to a tape recording, except that your whole body will feel rather than hear. Your overtaxed nervous condition will thus be relieved by the substitution of these specially selected thought processes or dreams. And your mind will be cleared of their everyday worries and distractions. Well, Senior Kennedy, I'm quite happy about your physical condition. If you're quite ready. Good.
Ready, Dr. Maxwell? Yes. We'll give you a sedative to relax your senior colleague. There's nothing to worry about. You'll wake up into an entirely different world. Is there anything wrong, Philip? No, no. Uh, I was just wondering why uh, an insurance investigator should want to see me. Probably nothing of importance. No. you half. I better see what this insurance man wants. seems to be some mystery about his recent life and death. I understood that his death was purely accident. Not quite. I talked to the police doctor. Denver died before that crash. Mm. Interesting. Did this police doctor say why? He made a guess at cerebral thrombosis. Mm. Reasonable. Very reasonable. Denver was one of your patients taking brain treatments. Yet he died from some kind of cerebral trouble just after he left this clinic. Now, that doesn't add up, Doctor. Why should it? There is such a thing as coincidence, Mr. Keenan. Perhaps it would help to clarify matters if I explained that our patients are not really patients in the ordinary sense, nor is this a clinic as you understand the term. Some years ago, I discovered a new technique in the treatment of certain neuroses, a method of relaxation that can be used to fight addiction, alcoholism, and a number of psychopathic conditions. It involves what one might loosely term electronic hypnosis. The effect is soothing, relaxing, and generally beneficial. Is that what you're doing here? Fundamentally, yes. Well, what about these patients that aren't really patients? They're unfortunate sick people, usually maladjusted or perhaps neurotic, who, for one reason or another, wish to escape from life. From life? There are many forms of escapism for the ordinary man and woman. Books, television, the theater, the cinema, even daydreams. But there are people who need something to blot out the everyday life entirely. A more perfect kind of escape. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some work to do. Oh, uh, thanks anyway, Doctor. Not at all. If I manage to convince you that we don't sell death in this clinic, then I'm content. On the other hand, death is the most perfect form of escape from life, isn't it? Philip, I wonder if you check these... Oh, I beg your pardon. 
Laura, this is Mr. Keenan, my wife. How, How do you do? do? Thanks again, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye. there should be the slightest element of truth in his suspicions, then I should be morally obliged to make a full investigation. And the clinic would have to close down. Could mean that, but it isn't necessary. But if there's any doubt at all... No doubts, just reservations. I am asked the same thing, Philip. If there's any danger to our patients, however remote, we must stop treatment at once. And make complete tests. We can't afford to take any risks. It's not as simple as that, my dear. Zakon must be consulted. This clinic is his property. Why not talk to Zakon? Call him now. You may be right. Dr. Maxwell here. Mr. Zakon, please. Zakon speaking. Maxwell here. Something important has turned up, Paul. It might affect the whole future of the clinic. You'd better come over and see me. Right. I'll be back in an hour. Shall I turn up the Strigoldian pettifer files just to see if they have something in common with Denver? Yes, would you? You will be firm with Zarkin, won't you? Philip! Something very disturbing has happened. We must close down the clinic. May I know the reason for this astonishing ultimatum? One of our patients died suddenly a few minutes after leaving the clinic. <laughs> for a moment, you had me worried, Doctor. <laughs> One patient out of more than 700. You don't understand. Our psychotherapy process may be dangerous, even lethal, particularly to the long-term patients. We must make careful tests. To do them properly, we must close down. You are being melodramatic, Doctor. One doesn't close a hospital because a few patients die. There has to be conclusive proof. As a doctor, it is clearly your duty to make whatever tests you think are necessary without depriving those in need of the treatment to which they are entitled. If you refuse, I have no alternative but to resign. Oh, don't be a fool. These stupid suspicions will destroy all we have built up. What about the many years you have devoted to psychoneural research? Do you wish to wipe them out just like that? I cannot be a party to what may be murder. Give me proof. That is all I ask for. We mustn't be impetuous, Dr. Maxwell. Tomorrow I shall come over to the clinic and we'll hold a staff conference to discuss the situation. That is surely reasonable. All right. 
Till tomorrow, then. Please give my regards to your wife, my dear fellow. Summers, Mr. Zucker. I think his curiosity is satisfied. Good. And you are not to mention Summers' name ever again. Understand? Will you please give me Dr. Hoff? I want you to come over with me to the Hello? clinic, Blow. There are some things we have to discuss with Dr. Hoff. Hello, Hoff. Zakon speaking. Blow and I are coming over. Well, you could hardly call it trouble. Just a small matter of curing Maxwell of an inconvenient obsession. So long. Yes, Mr. Keenan. Yes, we shall investigate immediately. Hello, c'est vous, Victor? Dites-moi, il y a une fatalité au numéro 24 de l'avenue Matignon, appartement numéro 12. Oui, voulez-vous vous y rendre immédiatement? C'est ça, parfait. Merci. you a drink. Fine. Thanks. Let me see. It used to be scotch. Still is. Still straight? Yes, I haven't changed much. Not in three years? No, nothing much has changed in three years. All Lang Syne, Ruth. Why not? Well, Jeff, I don't think you came here to play Remember When. No, this visit is strictly line of duty. I've been assigned by my home office to investigate the studio claim on Clark Denver. I feel like a guy who's opened an innocent-looking package and had to explode in his hands. Suddenly, Denver isn't important anymore. He's just a very small part of a bigger puzzle. That's why I came to see you. What puzzle? Well, the Amerson Clinic. Did you know Brad Summers? Yes. He's the publicity man for Cinesphere, who always looks so funny. Well, he didn't look funny just now. It seemed like suicide, but Summers wasn't the type. I have a hunch he was murdered. Murdered? But why? For not minding his own business. I think there was something funny about Denver's death, too. Summers had been asking an awful lot of questions about that clinic, and Denver had been a patient there. There was one other connection they had in common. A woman named Verna Berteau. Oh, well, you can't implicate Verna, Jeff. She simply acts as an agent for Paul Zakon. She finds clients and introduces them to Dr. Maxwell. And who is Paul Zakon? Oh, well, he owns the clinic. I thought everyone knew that. He helped Dr. Maxwell develop his invention. He financed the clinic and built the studio. He's an idealist. And I'm going to marry him. Well, congratulations. After you and I broke up, why, I seem to go to pieces. 
Paul has been very good to me. Well, I have no one to blame but myself. So here's to the future, Mrs. Paul Zakon, whom I still think is the most wonderful girl. Don't, Jeff. Paul is a good man, and he needs me. Okay, Ruth. I'll take your word for it. You say Zakon owns the clinic and the studio. What studio? Well, the studio is where they record the psychotherapy tapes, and they take the tapes over to the clinic. I was taking a tape over this morning when I ran into you. What kind of tapes? Oh, recordings of productions of various kinds. I act in some of them. This kind of thing. Do you mean movies? No, no. Dr. Maxwell has discovered a new way of recording thoughts, feelings, emotions on tape. It has something to do with the electrical impulses from the brain. I don't get the clinical angle. Well, we've started a new therapy for people who, well, want to get away from life for a while. Oh, yeah, I remember. Maxwell said something about escape from life. Oh, it's a wonderful new modern way of helping sick people, Jeff. There'll be more clinics and studios all over the country, the world, perhaps. And Zach will make a pile of money. Now you're being cynical. Sure I am. This is big business. This dangerous business, too, if you want my opinion. Denver died of some kind of brain trouble, and he wasn't the only one. The Zamerson Clinic's getting quite a reputation for sudden death. Jeff, if there was any sort of trouble, the police would have investigated this a long time ago. Well, I wasn't too impressed with the Amerson police. People never do impress you very much, do they, Jeff? Some people do. There was a connection between Denver, Strigoli, and Pettifer. What? I've been through the files. They all had the same period of treatment, and they all had the same tape number. And the amplitude increase was the same in all cases. So Keenan might be right. And you think this might be the cause? There may be a destructive electrolysis effect on the brain cells, especially on the long-term patients. But what if Zakhan refuses to be convinced? Then I shall make this equipment unusable tonight. It's the only thing I can do. Quiet. Here's Hoff. He goes to his room about 9 o'clock. I shall be back then. Will he know how to repair the equipment? Not when I've finished with it. You're doing the right thing, Philip. Then you can force Sacken to act on your terms. Working late? Yes, we're just going. They've sent us a new print of number 14 for waveform check. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Maxwell. I understand you called on Zakon at the studio this evening. Yes, we agreed to hold a conference tomorrow to discuss the problem. Don't worry, Maxwell. Zakon can always find the correct solution to every problem. Good night. <laughs> If you have no further points to make, Dr. Hoff, I think we can decide now what we are going to do. We are agreed the situation that has arisen is potentially dangerous to us. Therefore, we must deal with it quickly and efficiently. Like a military operation, I suggest. Precisely. First, the affair, Clark, Denver. The autopsy result will be cerebral thrombosis. I have the Amerson police doctor's assurance on that. And we can rely on his assistance. Next, two people have been asking questions. Summers has already been silenced. And I'm confident the police will go no further than a suicide verdict. Bloor is most efficient in such matters. The other man is an insurance investigator named Keenan. Curiosity again, an occupational disease. Shall I go and uh, see him? No, no, this won't be necessary. Just a routine check will suffice. 
which leaves us only Dr. Maxwell and his wife. I'm afraid they are no longer reliable. Perhaps we should consider the possibility doing without their services. Unfortunately, Maxwell's services are still essential. The equipment has got to be thoroughly checked and modified if necessary. We cannot risk the possibility of further deaths. In view of Maxwell's past, I'm sure we could persuade him to cooperate. It is his wife I'm thinking about. She possesses a certain stubborn integrity. Then the answer is simple. In Germany, when we wish to secure good behavior, we used to take hostages. It was quite successful as a short-term measure. May I remind you, Dr. Hoff, that you are no longer in charge of experimental surgery at a concentration camp? And now I think we will attend to our new patient. in charge of this case now, Dr. Hoff. That is no longer the case, I fear. What do you mean? Last night, you offered to tender me your resignation as head of the clinic. At our conference this evening, we decided to accept it, thereby relieving you from the burden of command. You will, however, be permitted to continue working as Dr. Hoff's assistant, providing you agree to the new policy which I decided upon some time ago. And that is? All patients will be subjected to a process of indoctrination designed to break down their resistance more speedily. Indoctrination? Yes. The unscientific term, I believe, is brainwashing. This is monstrous. You must be mad. If I may continue, my dear fellow. First, the patient's mind must be made completely receptive, emptied of all thought, a blank screen on which to project the images so ably devised by our friend over there. These images, at first, are of a disquieting nature. One might almost say nightmarish, as witness the current reactions of Signor Carlini. The duration of this period is regulated according to the strength of will possessed by the patient. Now he is ready for the next stage. Terror, confusion and darkness will be succeeded by ecstatic peace. A soothing dream play in which my own image predominates as the symbol of benevolence and mercy. 
Thus do I obtain entire control over those who are to hand themselves over to me as the arbiter of their fates. And fortunes. <laughs> My dear Maxwell, to be a benefactor of mankind costs money. It is a very expensive hobby. I am surprised at such behavior, Dr. Maxwell. Are you a doctor, by the way? You ought to know. That is not an answer for my question. You heard what Mr. Zakon said. Are you a doctor? Never mind, Floor. I've taken the trouble to check on you, Maxwell. You're not a doctor. You're never qualified. But you were obsessed with the idea of building a machine that would inject images and sounds directly into the brain. So you passed yourself off as a doctor, as a psychoneurologist, in order to obtain patients for your experiments. I never harmed anyone. I cured many people. What about a certain Claude Weatherall? Remember him? It would be most inconvenient if the police were to exhume his body, would it not? He was a dying man. He'd have died anyhow. He begged me to carry out the experiment. It might have saved him. But it didn't. But there was a chance, more than a chance. Of course, Dr. Maxwell, we are not disputing your integrity. We are merely pointing out that no mention of your experiment was made at the inquest. In any case, Dr. Maxwell had already left the country. Because Zarkon asked me to supervise the building of this clinic. That is so, Maxwell. But the police are always inclined to skepticism. If they knew the facts, they might wish to exhume Wetherill's body. They might even change their minds about the cause of death. I'm not afraid to face the police. Everything I did was done in good faith. But why throw away a promising career? Your secret is in good hands, we are your friends. All we ask is a little cooperation. And if I don't, you'll expose me. I take it that's the bargain. There is no bargain. You cannot refuse. Think of your wife. Philip, Dr. Hoff is still running the tapes. Why haven't you told him to shut down? I've already explained to you, Laura. Zarkon is right. If we close down this clinic, our patients will lose all confidence in us. But these people are in danger. We can't take risks with their lives. We don't know for certain. That's why I've got to keep on working on these tests and gather any proof that I can. We've no time to lose. That's why I've got to live here for the next few days. Or a few weeks, a few months. And why has Zarkon put Dr. Hoff in charge? Because, because it took the legal responsibility away from me. I can work with an easier conscience. Can you? Philip, you must tell me. What hold has Zachem got over you? Laura, it's best this way for both of us. When I finish this job here, I'll resign. We'll go away, make a fresh start. Was that part of Zachem's bargain? All right, Philip, if you won't tell me. I'll find out from Zachem. He has no hold over me. Laura, please stay away from him. Why? Because he is quite ruthless. I know, Philip. I'm going to be quite ruthless, too. Is Mr. Zachem in? Not yet, Madam Maxwell. All right, I'll wait upstairs in Mr. Zachem's office. Me, yes, madame. I know the way. See Mr. Zakon, please. Oh, you have an appointment, Monsieur. Monsieur Zakon is out. See him. Would you tell him I called? Very well, monsieur. Thank you.
Bring him to studio security officer, please, and tell him a very tall man is just approaching the side entrance without authority. I want him brought to my office. Très bien, Monsieur Zakon. Zakon. Now you're asking for trouble. Jeff, after you left, I phoned Verna Berteau and asked her about Brad Summers. Well, it was the way she talked, in the past tense, like she and Paul knew he was dead. How could they have known? That's what I want to know. Well, I ran into Laura Maxwell this morning in Amazon. She's very worried about her husband, Jeff. It seems that he spent the whole night in the clinic testing the psychotherapy equipment. They're both very worried, Jeff. Dr. Maxwell seems to think there might be some danger in the treatment they're giving the long-term patients. You're doing fine, honey. Keep going. Well, then she said that Paul has put Dr. Hoff in place of Dr. Maxwell in the clinic because they think that Dr. Maxwell is no longer reliable. So what price your fine idealistic sack on now? You still have the same opinion? I don't know what to think. But I know what I ought to do. What's that? My business. Mine too. <laughs> oh, I'd better go now. Jeff, there's something I'd like you to know. What? I love you. But I don't understand why you have changed like this, Ruth. Seems I'm not the only one who's changed, Paul. You seem different lately, too. Business worries, my dear. I have a lot to contend with at the clinic. Maybe I just see you differently now. What do you mean, now? I talked to Laura Maxwell this morning. Laura has been working too hard. She's on the verge of a breakdown. She seems very sane to me. Dr. Hoff wouldn't agree with you. In fact, he telephoned me only a few minutes ago to say that he had to send Laura away to the country for a long rest. So we won't be troubled by her fevered imaginings for a while. To the country? When is she leaving? Well, she's left already, my dear. I just saw her car outside. You must be mistaken, my dear. Laura has not been here today. Then what about this? A charm from Laura's bracelet. I thought you said she hadn't been here. My dear, there are things you don't understand. You're quite right, Paul. And one of them is you. How I ever thought that this could ever bring me any happiness. I see. The classic gesture. And now probably you are going to tell me that there is somebody else. Don't pretend you're jealous, Paul. The human emotions never suited you really well. Ruth! 
I'm sorry, Paul, but my mind's quite made up. Jeff, what? Wait for me outside. Blore. Stop Ruth Vance from leaving the studio. Yes, Ruth. Never mind why. Did you allow him to get as far as my private office? Je m'excuse, monsieur, mais en voyant qu'il était avec Mademoiselle Vance, naturellement, je l'ai laissé passer. Mademoiselle Vance? Eh oui, monsieur. Vous pouvez aller. Sit down, Mr. Keenan. I've been wondering when you would be visiting me. Ordinarily, I would have had you thrown out or handed over to the police. But any friend of my fiancée's is a friend of mine. Your ex fiance isn't she? A little tiff. Cigar, Mr. Keenan? No, thanks. Exactly how long have you known Miss Vance? Quite a while. I was engaged to her myself one time. Oh. It begins, as you would say, to add up. I've been doing a little addition, too, Mr. Zakhan. And what does your total amount to? Murder. Dr. Maxwell invented this dream recording gimmick for purposes of medical research. But you heard about it and found out it could be turned into a gold mine. Treating wealthy patients, but adding a little electronic brainwashing so that they became completely dependent on this dream world you gave them. Your powers of imagination are considerable, Mr. Keenan. Please continue. So then your patients started to die, Zakhan. Stragoldi, Pettifer, Clark Denver. And then a man named Brad Summers started asking awkward questions, didn't he? And a woman named Verna Berto tipped you off. So Summers was murdered, and his death made to look like suicide. Well, I'm still around, Zakhan, and I'm not so easy to dispose of. My company knows where I am, and don't think I haven't been turning in reports on my movements. At this point, presumably, I'm expected to say, you know too much, Mr. Keenan, and produce a pistol or something. But we are not on the stage. You may by all means go to the police with your absurd suspicions. I fancy they will not be as attentive as I've been. Pierre, I'll have you shown out in safety, as long as you do not call again. Goodbye, Mr. Keenan. Sorry, no. She doesn't often visit here. Then maybe I could speak to Dr. Maxwell. I'm afraid not. Dr. Maxwell is very busy. He can see no one. Mrs. Maxwell? Mrs. Maxwell has gone away for health reasons, indefinitely. Thank you. Oui, oui, ici 45-52. Non, monsieur, madame n'est pas là. Qui? Ah, bonjour, monsieur Keenan. Non, madame is not coming. Oh, 
Oh, j'ai nos lieux six, seven o'clock. Ah, et vous travaillez au studio Non. Alors, euh, votre partie de clinique Non plus Non, monsieur, je ne sais pas. Vous êtes riche, monsieur. Not at her place in Cannes. I just called there. Nobody seems to know where she is. Have you asked Monsieur Paul Zacon? He's our fiancé. Not anymore. Perhaps she's a change our mind again. It is a lady's privilege. No, no, Monsieur Keenan. You must realize this is not an affair for the police. Miss Vance has not been reported missing. I'm reporting her missing. So am I to, to mobilize the police? Am I to alert the military? Because Monsieur Keenan has reported a missing person. No, 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 no. You are wasting my time. I say to you, good day. No, no, no. This time I will not listen. This woman must be identified formally. Paul Zacken, I specifically ask that identification must be delayed as long as possible. Oh, Zacon, Zacon, Zacon. Must I then obey his commands? No, no, Pierre. You have become too involved with this man. It could mean my whole career, Gaston. I'm mine if I remain silent. No, Madame must be identified immediately. Well, maybe I can help, gentlemen. This is Maxwell, isn't it? Well, how did she die? She was strangled. Her body was found in a wood not 10 kilometers from here. Does Dr. Maxwell know? Please, you must leave the question of identification to us. Look, I've got news for you, doctor. My insurance company is claiming Clark Denver's body for a special autopsy. But the autopsy has already been performed. Performed by you? So the insurance companies are sticklers for accuracy. What did you make the cause of death? It is on the certificate, cerebral thrombosis. I didn't ask you what was on the certificate. I asked you the cause of death. You have no right to question my veracity. Now look, doctor, you're in trouble and you know it. Now answer my question, what did Clark Denver die of? Well? It was so far as I could determine some kind of electrolysis of the brain tissues. Meaning? Severe damage to the brain cells by electric shock. Now, you get on that phone and get the prefect your can. You tell him what you told me. Tell him Laura Maxwell's been murdered and to get some squad cars out to that clinic right away. Please. That's your only chance of staying out of jail. As it is, you've got plenty of questions to answer. Please, Mr. Keenan, I have no choice. Second could have ruined me. He's already done that. Now, get moving. Hello? Je veux parler à la préfecture de police à Cannes. Oui, oui. I'm sorry, my dear, for the way you were brought here. I must apologize for Blore's heavy-handed methods. All I did was ask him to stop you leaving until I could talk to you again. About our marriage, I wanted to persuade you to be reasonable, Ruth. The Skeenum cannot mean anything to you. I loved him long before I ever met you, and I know now I always shall. Infatuation, hysteria. I should have known better that you would never understand. The power of love. I have far greater sources of power at my disposal. Yes, I know. Wealth, influence. Those two. The battle. The power to make you forget. I hope you won't force me to exert it. Miss Vance needs to relax a while, Dr. Hall. I understand. A long rest is indicated. Like Laura Maxwell. You will forget, my dear. There is still time to change your mind. <laughs> gently, Blore, gently.
there's a front entrance to this clinic, you know, Keenan. I've got news for you, Dr. Maxwell. Clark Denver's death was due to severe electrical damage to the brain. Now, the police doctors will confirm that. I know. I've got the proof. All right, Dr. Hoff. Something soothing and relaxing to begin with. Cape number 11 would be most suitable, I think. There's something else, Dr. Maxwell. It's your wife. She's dead. Who killed her? Well, that's what we have to find out. Now, where are they? Here in this clinic. Is Ruth Vance here, too? Is Ruth Vance here? Huh? Yes, yes. Where? Probably being brainwashed by this time. Psychotherapy equipment was not only dangerous, but lethal. Then I suggest that you return to the laboratory immediately and concentrate on making the equipment safe. No, Zarko. That's all over. All it's back on. Now, where's Ruth? She... She's not here. Get up. Which of you murdered my wife? Archers! I have to do it, Maxwell. He ordered me to. I have to do it. He said he... Christ, fool! Take it easy, Maxwell. You can't believe him, Maxwell. You know, he's a psychopathic killer. I tried my best for him, but it was of no avail. First Brad Summers, then Laura Maxwell. Yes, yes. He's a homicide maniac. It, it's a lie. You gave the orders. I only carried them out. <laughs> people you've killed in this clinic. Max!
do what you can for her.